Hey everyone, this video is part of a series with Harry Everett, who runs a great space science channel you can check out here and in the description. The solar system is packed with objects whose names come from unexpected and fascinating origins. Let's take a deep dive into the beginnings of some of these names and see how they came about. To start, let's look at the Sun. The Sun's name in ancient Greece was Helios, where the name for the heliocentric model of the solar system comes from. Ancient Rome called it Sol, which is where the term solar comes from. The modern name for the Sun originates from Old English, where it was called Sunne, which roughly translated to South. The Latin term Sol and English term Sun both overlap with Sunday, as this term came from Dies Solus, meaning Day of the Sun. The origin of Mercury's name comes from the Greek god Hermes, who was the messenger of the gods. When the Romans observed the planet, they called it Mercury, which was the Roman equivalent of Hermes. The reason for this name was due to how fast Mercury moved across the sky. In modern times, we know its fast motion is due to it having the shortest orbit of any planet. Venus is named after the Roman god of love and beauty, but its surface is anything but beautiful. With crushing pressures, clouds of sulfuric acid, and burning temperatures. The ancient Roman name for this planet as the Morning Star, also called Lucifer, would be more of an appropriate name for this hellish planet. The name of the Earth has been attributed to many ancient gods. The ancient Greeks called the Earth Gaia, the mother of all life. Gaia was closely mirrored by Terra in Roman mythology, which means ground. Middle English used the term Eorth, which was a pagan goddess of the Earth analogous to Gaia and Terra. Eventually, Eorth developed to Earth without capitalization, and by modern English, the capitalization of Earth was common. Mars was known as Nergal, the god of war to the ancient Sumerians. Interestingly, the ancient Greeks also named the planet after their god of war, Ares. In the modern era, it's named after the Roman god of war with the same name, Mars. Ceres was discovered by an Italian astronomer based in Sicily. After the existence of a planet between Mars and Jupiter was theorized, the search ended with the discovery of Ceres. Originally, the full name was going to be Sereri Ferdinandia, named after both Ceres, the Roman goddess of agriculture whose worship was thought to have originated in Sicily, and King Ferdinand of Sicily. However, after the international community denied the name, it was shortened to just Ceres, as we know the dwarf planet to be called today. Jupiter is king of the planets, and the origin of its name is just as fitting. Its name in Germanic mythology is Vor, where the name Thursday, or Vor's Day, comes from. In Roman times, Thursday was Dies Jovis. In Greek, Roman, and Germanic cultures, the planet is equated with thunder and lightning, and Jupiter is also the king of the gods. Saturn was discovered long before recorded history, and has gone by many names. To the ancient Hindus, it was known as Shani, and was a judger of the good and evil acts of everyone. To the ancient Greeks, it was called Phinon, and to the Romans, it was sacred to Saturn, the Roman god of agriculture. Eventually, modern astronomers simply refer to the planet as Saturn, rather than the star of Saturn as the Romans had called it. Perhaps the most unfortunate story of naming a planet in the solar system belongs to the planet Uranus. The discoverer of Uranus, William Herschel, originally tried to call the planet George's star in honour of the British king, King George III. However, this name was not popular, and many wanted to name the planet Neptune instead. Uranus could have been the name if the Greek pronunciation of the name had been used instead, but the Latin pronunciation was chosen, Uranus. Interestingly, just as Saturn is the father of Jupiter, Uranus is the father of Saturn. Neptune had many candidate names when it was discovered in 1846. Janus and Oceanus were two proposals. However, one of the discoverers of the planet, Urban Louverrier, initially proposed Neptune before settling on his own name, Louverrier, as the planet's name. Despite a popular French consensus on this name, Neptune was finally decided upon after the Roman god of the sea. The story of naming Pluto began when the hunt for a ninth planet, which was dubbed Planet X, started. Pluto was discovered in 1930 and was originally thought to be as massive as Earth. In celebration of the discovery of this new planet, a naming competition was held with over 1,000 submissions for a name. The name Pluto was suggested by an 11-year-old schoolgirl called Venetia Burney. Pluto eventually lost its status as a ninth planet in 2006 when it was demoted to dwarf planet status. Perhaps the most distinctively named dwarf planet of the solar system is... Named after a mythical girl from a story by the Kung people, was a defender of her people, punishing those that defied her people with a magic horn and spines. Its name is perhaps the most unique in the entire solar system. 
Haumea is an egg-shaped dwarf planet that was originally discovered in 2004. It was first nicknamed Santa, as it was discovered just three days after Christmas. Its official name came from the island where it was discovered, Hawaii. The matron goddess of Hawaii is Haumea, which symbolizes fertility, and this is fitting for the dwarf planet, whose two moons and ring system was thought to have been made from Haumea itself. Maki Maki is a dwarf planet around 50 times further out from the sun than Earth is. This dwarf planet was first given the nickname Easter Bunny, as it was discovered very close to Easter. Easter Bunny was soon renamed to Maki Maki, the creator deity of the native people on Easter Island, which kept its connection to Easter. An interesting observation about Maki Maki is that its surface is very red due to frozen methane pellets on its surface, and these pellets are estimated to be one centimeter in size. Sedna is another dwarf planet that's extremely far out, with an orbital period of 11,400 years. Sedna only has 1.3% the orbital speed of Earth, which made it extremely hard to detect. Because of its slow movement, it was originally named the Flying Dutchman, while an official name was being made up. Eventually, the name Sedna was decided upon, named after the Inuit goddess of the sea. But Sedna is so distant and extremely cold, it's appropriate to name it after a goddess that lives at the bottom of the frozen, dark Arctic Ocean depths. Even further out, in an area of the solar system called the Scattered Disk, is a dwarf planet called Eris. Eris is the most massive known dwarf planet and was originally called Xena, named after the show of the same name. Since Eris was larger than Pluto, and at the time Pluto was not classified as a planet, there was a debate about whether Eris should be classified as a planet or not. Partly as a result of this debate, a formal definition of planet was decided upon, which relegated both Eris and Pluto to dwarf planet status. However, the dwarf planet was still given a name respective of planets, Eris, the Greek god of strife and discord, because the team believed that it simply deserved one after being considered a planet for so long. Far out is an extremely far out object observed in the solar system. Its name comes from its extreme distance from the sun, at over a hundred times the distance from Earth to the sun. Even further out is the farthest observed object, of course named far, far out. So in this video, we have gone from the center of the solar system to the furthest reaches we have observed. Go over to his channel now by following the link in the description or on the screen. And thanks for watching.